we've got a limited budget at school, um, so we, we do have to pick and choose really carefully what we do buy. And obviously the, the things like computers are most important. So something like a visualiser we see as being a little bit of a luxury. Dave Orrit is a Year 3 teacher and ICT coordinator at Longton Primary School in Preston. He's been teaching for six years. No one at the school has ever used a visualiser in the classroom, so Dave would like to find out more and share his newfound knowledge with a highly experienced but ICT averse Year 2 teacher. At the moment I just think of them as sticking a book under and, and, and that's it, but I'm sure there's more to it. Um, I'm looking forward to finding it out. Following his progress through the challenge, you'll find out, among other things, how you can use visualisers to take photographs, to create videos for pupils to reference and in pupil self-assessment. If you want to give it a go yourself, there's a range of useful videos and support materials on the page for this programme on the Teachers TV website. So Dave's travelled to Essex to meet Jenny Hall, a Year 4 teacher at Harold Court Primary School, who's using the visualiser in a range of lessons for Dave to observe. She begins her day with a numeracy lesson. To get our brains working and get us ready for our lesson, I want us to do some estimating. I have got some counters here and I am going to put them under the visualiser and then I'm going to hide them. So you need to make sure you are paying attention because they will not be up on the screen very long. Look in. Ready? I'm going to do it once. Okay. I'll do it once more. I'll show it. So you have another look. And hidden again. So what do we think? Our sensible guesses, our estimates. Timmy? 42. Sam? 46. Well done. Let's try another one then. Jenny displays a different number of counters under the visualiser each time and children are encouraged to estimate the quantity. OK, last one now. So what are our estimates then? Uh, Rihanna? 63. OK, and Lucy? 76. OK, there were 70 counters. Now, but remembering, you were making estimates. I did not expect you to get the exact correct answer. What I did expect was for you to have an answer that was as close as possible to what I had. After the lesson starter, Jenny moves on to the topic of 3D shapes. She's used the visualiser to pre-record a video of herself making a cuboid net, which she can now play to her Year 4 pupils. First of all, you will need a piece of paper, we've got ruler, pencil, I've got some colouring pencils, scissors and a glue stick. So, you can see here I've got my four rectangles. So we're going to start out like that. If you're watching this on the Teachers TV website and would like to know how to use the visualiser to record and loop a video, look below for a short how-to film. With the actual video, I've got it on repeat, so it's, it's actually playing through media player. This runs through the smart board. Yeah, so I've got it run through so that I can have it running exactly through the whiteboard, but also I've got it so I can have it as a standalone. So if I press this one, this is the visualiser button, that is a standalone. I don't need the computer for that. So I could use my computer for another document and still use the visualiser. Now Jenny moves on to art. She begins by using the visualiser's spotlight function to focus on particular elements of Vincent van Gogh's paintings. I want us to be focusing on the detail when we're looking at work. So if we kind of look carefully, we could pick out a certain section of the painting. We can see the ones in the centre that are actually deeper colours. You can see actually how some of these flowers down the bottom here, how they have drooped. Jenny and her pupils head to the nature garden to find flowers they can draw themselves. I like them. I think they're Oh, it's a really good job to choose it. <laughs> Can you zoom in as well? Yeah, it is quite clear. I mean, the focus on it is actually at the end here. Oh, that's really good, look. At the end of the session, Jenny uses the visualiser's camera and split screen function to evaluate some of the completed drawings. 
but I want you to look carefully at the original flower that we picked in the quiet garden and look at these three fantastic sketches focus on the details okay so let's think carefully about the positives and if we're going to do this again how could we improve it okay Lucy um, I think um, the, that one at the corner I think um, that they looked at the picture really carefully because as you can see there's green bits and I think they should improve by because that's a bit yellow they put a bit of brown in it so they think um, they should look at the colour carefully. I think that would be a really good improvement point, thank you. After seeing the visualiser in action across a range of lessons, Dave has a few questions. Now I've seen them in action, how much do they cost? Um, the ones that we've got, the models we've got, uh, were fit £550 each but they are towards the sort of top end of the range that they have. What do you think the biggest benefit is that you've seen since using it with the children? Um, I think the biggest sort of thing for me personally is the um, self-assessment side of things. So I think, you know, at the end of a lesson, children actually being able to look at a piece of work, look at it against the learning objectives, the success criteria, and they can actually pick out themselves now what went really well, they know how to improve their work and photocopying is a sort of very basic thing but it saves money in that way because you can actually just show a document on the screen. It's just improved some practice that we have already got in, in place. Dave's now got two weeks to devise a lesson plan for his own pupils based on using the visualiser in his classroom. There has been some really good points and some bits that have surprised me about how good it actually is. I was quite impressed with how accurate the visualiser was when you zoomed in. When we turned the brightness up, it was a lot clearer than I thought it would be. So that really impressed me. And I can see the, the benefits of using it, putting some children's work under and annotating over it or putting the file into Smartboard. I'm going to borrow one for our school, um, use it for a couple of weeks, play about with it and, and just see what I can do with it really. I'm looking forward to it. Two weeks later, we're back at Longton Primary School. How has Dave got on? I've had the visualiser in the classroom then, and to be honest, I've used it every day. It's really easy to set up. It basically, it's just one lead goes into the projector, or you can plug it into the computer as well, which is a little bit more difficult because there's software to install. But it's been really plain sailing, it's been really easy to use. Dave's Year 3 pupils are currently studying Africa and have been learning about Nelson Mandela. Today, he's going to use the visualiser to enhance his art lesson. If you'd like to see Dave's lesson plan and are watching this on the Teachers TV website, look below. He starts by asking his pupils facts about Nelson Mandela, which he writes on the whiteboard next to a picture taken using the visualiser. Benji. He was put in prison at Robin Island. Do you remember how long for? 27 years. Yeah. He was um, president in 1994 and he retired in 1999. Well remembered. Um, he was South African. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at drawing him. Now what I've managed to do is on the visualiser, I've recorded uh, me, not very well, but having a go at drawing him. So let's have a watch. What am I doing there? What am I doing with those two little marks? The little lines so you kind of know where it is and how wide it is. Kind of, yeah. I'm going to start one corner of the eye there and I'm going to start the other corner of the eye there where I put the other mark. So now I'm drawing the nose. What do you think I'm going to go for next? The mouth. I am, I think. Do you want to see what I finished as? Yeah. Right, that was what I finished with the end. Right, go on, off you go. We're going to have a go at drawing him. While they're drawing their pictures, Dave notices that a few children could be making their portraits more lifelike. So he takes one pupil's work to illustrate to the whole class how this can be achieved. OK, now Amelia said it's OK for me to show this. What's wrong with the eyes? Georgina? Um, are they a bit small? Yes. So she needs to make her eyes bigger. Let's just see if we can take a photo of this. And we can show you what I mean. All right, there it is. What she needs to do is here, her eyes are going to have to be bigger. 
Now Dave is going to demonstrate how to colour the portraits. He uses the visualiser to photograph a painting of Nelson Mandela. This photograph is placed alongside his own drawing where he shows techniques for using pastels. I'm going to choose uh, a brown. What else am I going to get? What other colours do you think I might need? White of his hair. Perhaps white, right? Now there's not going to be one section of his face that's the same <coughs> colour overall. Can you see it now? It looks patchy. It looks like it's gone from that to that to that and it looks silly, doesn't it? But once you go over with a lighter colour and blend it in, it doesn't look like that. For the first time I saw it, I thought it was actually um, quite um, boring. Boring, but um, as as Mr. Roberts being getting used to um, like yeah. using it, um, it's got more interesting in how yeah. it uses it, like the features that it yeah, has and stuff. To I turn just... it in closer and the brightness, it's amazing. You know you can take the uh, you can take the photo and put it in the corner, and I like the way how the teacher does it while we're working, and then it kind of records it, and then it shows us after how he does it. The video was useful because um, it helped us draw the shape of Nelson Mandela. The best part is where um, when it's on the big screen. Everyone can see it, and when it's zoomed in, everyone can see it better. It's quite useful for handwriting. Yeah, so you can see the letters. And um, also, instead of like, photocopying lots of sheets, you can just look at it on the whiteboard. <laughs> it's just really good. <laughs> I think the lesson went quite well. Showing the children things that you're doing with your hands instead of having them all around a table. In the past, I've had to use a video camera and link it up to the whiteboard itself, to the projector, which is more difficult. But with that, just throw it under, either do a recording or just do it at the time. It's just so much simpler. The demonstration with the pastelling, I can't think of any other way how you would do that with the children. And Dave is so impressed with the visualiser's functionality, he's decided to share the skills he's picked up with another colleague. I've been teaching on and off for over 30 years. I think people would describe me as a technophobe. I use ICT very rarely, and if I do use it, I have to practice it over and over again, so I'm confident I know exactly what I'm doing. And when it goes on in the classroom, I ask the children to cross their fingers um, and then uncross them when everything's working, so they all give me a clap. David Oyt, who was our ICT coordinator, um, came down wanting somebody who he knew wasn't confident to try um, some new equipment, the visualiser. Um, with a very, very brief description of how it worked, um, he came down, showed me, and I could see I could have a go at this. So I had a little practice with him, 10 minutes, and I was just wowed with it. I thought it was a really good piece of equipment that I could see I could well use in my classroom. By the second day, I just did it. There was, I didn't even ask the children to cross their fingers. That's how confident I felt, yeah. In literacy, we're, we're reading stories by the same author and we have no big books. So I could put a small book on the screen, um, enlarge the text so the children could see it. We could use it like a big book. If I hadn't got it, I would have had to have typed the whole of the text out to put on the big screen for them to read. And then, as they were reading, keep showing them the pictures in the book for the visual learners. So it was like using a big book up on the big screen, which was wonderful. The children loved it. I'd love one in my classroom. I would use it all the time. And I'd even tailor lessons to use it. I would change how I taught in the classroom to use it, definitely. But it would be lovely if every teacher could have one, because then everybody would get used to using it and the children would be used to it as well, and it would be uh, a wonderful um, teaching tool, without a doubt. I'd want one, yeah. Definitely after using it. I, w I wasn't convinced at first, but yeah, I I'd love one. If you're watching this on the Teachers TV website and are interested to see how teachers of different subjects and key stages use visualisers, then have a look at the Better Learning with ICT case studies below. Mm -hmm.